just been watching a bit of the rally um, of the Harris Waltz campaign in Detroit. Um, big crowd, uh, enthusiastic, as you would expect in a major party presidential campaign. Um, I have to be honest, I, I get the sense of optimism from this campaign uh, that it's a campaign that's going to win. That's my feeling. Uh, granted, I haven't watched that much of the Trump campaigning. Um, frankly, I can't. I don't know if I could bring myself to do so. I cannot stand Donald Trump, but um, I'm sure there are big rallies as well. I'm sure he's also getting in thousands of people. Um, but so much of Trumpism is based on negativity, and yes, it's make America great again. But I think there is an authoritarian streak to Trumpism. Project 2025, as Harris has warned about, I think does raise some alarm bells. I think it is a gateway to a sort of personality cult around Trump, as if that didn't already exist. Um, yes, there is a cause to be made against excessive bureaucracy, but it's a little bit like in Britain where the Conservatives spoke about the blob, the bureaucratic blob of the civil service. Um, I, I think it, it raises concerns about what their agenda is, um, trying to bring even more executive power to the presidency. Um, now, I want to focus on this video on Harris as a presidential candidate and um, Tim Watts, her running mate. I'm just going to get something. I should have really had this on standby, but I'll just get it while the video is running. Uh, this is a this is the cover of the Spectator magazine. Um, so it shows the sort of icons: the Democrat donkey, the Republican elephant. Uh, Kamala takes charge. Apparently, it's pronounced Kamala, like Kamala. Um, you know, some of the stuff that Trump's coming out with—it just looks desperate. I mean, attacking the fact that she's mixed race. I think she's been very clear that. She's proud of both her Indian and black background, and that's totally legitimate. Many Americans are of mixed background. Barack Obama was. Um, so I, I don't see any controversy with her identifying as black because that is part of her heritage. Um, but it's just typical of Trump to go there and to make a thing of that. He had this bizarre attack where he was calling her a beautiful woman, which sort of would seem like a compliment, but it's in the context of comparing her to the former first lady and it just I just think it's irrelevant to any sort of debate in a presidential campaign um, I will say this though I think if Harris goes down a path of turning it into a battle of the sexes that would be a mistake I remember during Hillary Clinton's campaign Madeleine Albright came out with this line that there's a special place in hell for women who don't vote for other women now that's ridiculous people have a right to vote for whoever they want um, and I don't think a woman should be obliged to vote for a woman candidate if she doesn't agree with her. Um, there will be conservative women who don't trust Harris, uh, and that's a right. Um, so I think Harris would make a mistake by exclusively focusing on being the first woman president, which she would be if she wins. Um, one of the one of the strategies of the Obama campaign, I think, in two thousand and eight, was that he deliberately didn't make a huge thing about being a black candidate. He couldn't avoid it. It was part of his campaign. But he successfully managed to reach out to white America in a way that previous black candidates didn't. And as we know, he got a comfortable victory and then a two-term presidency. Now, Harris, if she's to win, she needs to reach out beyond being a ethnic minority woman. Um, and I think choosing Tim Waltz as a running mate was a smart move. With presidential tickets, there's always a sort of balancing act, um, and I don't see that on the Republican ticket. I don't think, by the way, that people should vote on the ethnicity or the race or the gender of uh, of a candidate, but unfortunately, American politics, the way it is, it does matter, um, and what you have on the Republican ticket is, is two white men. Now, I don't think that's a reason to vote against them. I want to be very clear on that. But what Harris has done is clever because if she'd picked another woman or another ethnic minority it could have been seen as too radical what does she do she picks a 61 year old white man 
from a Midwest fit, you know. Uh, and Tim Waltz, in many ways, is just conventional Midwest governor. Um, there are questions of opening up now about his military record. I know Vance has been attacking him for that. Um, allegations of stolen honour. He did make a speech in which he said uh, there shouldn't be weapons of war that I used um, in civilian hands, not verbatim. But he was talking about this issue of AR-15s now. I think the Democratic record in gun violence is a lot better than the Republican record. They have tried to do something about it. If Waltz didn't actually see combat service, i.e. he was in the National Guard, but apparently he left before his unit was deployed to Iraq, then he shouldn't have said, you know, weapons that he saw in war. That was, you know, he shouldn't have said that. But attacking him on his military record when he did actually serve. It's not like he's pretending to be in the military and he was never in the military. Others have defended him. Um, I think that's a little bit, you know, again, it's cynical. Uh, I'm not saying the Democrats aren't capable of that as well, but, you know, I think right now the Republicans are going for a negative campaign. They're focusing on how can we attack uh, Harris and Waltz. And sure, the Democrats are doing the same thing, but with Donald Trump, you have a convicted felon. That's a fact. He is a convicted felon. Um, I saw an interview with Douglas Murray in which he was talking about why January the 6th wasn't irrelevant. He said it wasn't an insurrection, but nor was it nothing. Now, Murray um, has been very outspoken against the regressive left. and I think many people watching that, their Trump supporters would be disappointed. I personally think it's good that Murray has seen the light. I think he's been a bit late on it. I think for a long time, he, like too many other conservatives, were too slow to condemn Trump's successes. But he has, and I give him credit for that. Um, at the moment, Harris Walt seems to be leading quite a number of polls, but they certainly can't be complacent. Three months isn't that long in the American political cycle. Um, and if Harris does win, it will show her her capabilities. Now, she has not been a perfect vice president. I think she was too slow on the southern border issue. She should have visited that. She was off the mark on that one. Um, but there's things that the Republicans might try to attack her on that they're going to fail. For example, they will try to say that she's far left um, and that she's soft on crime. Well, that will backfire because her record in California is being tough on crime as a prosecutor. And who did she go after? She went after some pretty serious criminals, you know, predators, um, people guilty of serious fraud, uh, ripping off taxpayers. So they can't accuse her of being soft on crime. You know, paradoxically, they'll say that she locked up a lot of black men, but you can't have it both ways. You can't say she's soft on crime. Oh, but by the way, she locked up black men. Well, if they commit serious crimes, then what's the problem? Um, there is issues definitely within the American justice system. I'm not saying there isn't, but I just think that that would backfire if they try saying Harris is soft on crime when she's the opposite. Um, and that might actually be successful in the campaign. Because that's one thing Democrats have been accused of is being soft on crime. Um, you know, Democrat-run cities, let's face it, have been in a mess. Um, her home state, California, I mean... She's not governor of California, so the Trump campaign can't attack her for that. That would be something they would have attacked Gavin Newsom on if he'd been running for office. Indeed, maybe that's why he's not, because he knows his record has been nothing to shout about. But, um, yeah, I think that choosing Waltz was a smart move because, you know, he's a white man and she needs to reach into middle America. One thing the Clinton campaign done, it got more popular votes in 2016. Hillary Clinton got more votes than Donald Trump, a point that should not be forgotten. But she failed to get a lot of Midwest states. She didn't get the Electoral College vote. Now, there is a case the Democrats have long pushed this, that the Electoral College needs reform, that it's fundamentally unfair, that the candidate who gets more votes can lose the election. But it's not going to change anytime soon. So Harris has to win a lot of those states. Um, Michigan may be a challenge because the Palestinian diaspora is there and they're very angry with the Democrats right now over what they perceive as uh, Biden and Harris being too close to Israel. Although Harris has vocally condemned the deaths of civilians in Gaza, 
The problem is they're still arming Israel, so it looks contradictory on one hand they're condemning the death of civilians, but they're arming, you know, they're basically providing the weapons that are killing those civilians. So it's also contradictory. I personally think it's time that America and Britain seriously consider putting a halt on arming Israel, um, whilst also putting a lot of condemnation and pressure on other parties involved for escalating the situation um, and also demanding the hostages are released. But the number of civilians who've died out there is horrendous. It's past 40,000 people now, as per several sources. Um, I'll go wrap this up soon. No doubt there'll be a lot more to say about the American election, but I really hope that Harris wins, not because I think she would be a perfect president. I certainly don't like the wokeism of the Democratic Party, but I just think Trump is so toxic and so um, unpredictable. I think a lot of NATO leaders will be privately hoping that Harris wins. Um, she's not perfect, but I think she'll be a much better leader than Donald Trump will be. Um, you know, he, he has the gall to talk about her standing up to Putin. This is a guy who he claims absurdly that he would have stopped Putin invading Ukraine. He urged him not to do it. Well, the very day of the invasion, Trump said it was a genius move by Putin. So which is it? You either urge him not to invade Ukraine or you're praising him for doing so. Trump's just a narcissist um, clown, frankly. Um, I think that, I, I mean, I just hope Harris wins because I I want, I, I think the stink of Donald Trump needs left in the past. I think he's really poisoned American democracy with his brand of uh, politics. Um, none of this is to say that the Democrats are without critique. I think one of the big mistakes is to play too much to divisive identity politics. Um, you know, they have pandered to Black Lives Matter, they have pandered to trans dogma, all that sort of stuff. I think it is divisive. Um, they need to do what Bill Clinton done in the 90s and reach out to the middle ground. Um, and Obama, to some extent, done that as well. Um, in the Biden years, it's been, they've pandered more to the left. Uh, I think they need to get more to the center ground, in my opinion. Um, I think Keir Starmer and President Harris would work very well together. They come from similar backgrounds. But Starmer and Lamy are practical. They'll work with Trump if they have to. But I'm sure behind the scenes they're hoping that Harris will win. They certainly can't attack her on age. And I actually think, despite what the Trump campaign says, you know, this has kind of offset them a bit and they're not quite sure what angle to take. They can't attack her on crime. They can't attack her on age. So they're sort of scraping the barrel. Um, but it's too early to be complacent. Trump could still win. What Harris's campaign needs to do is really, really reach out to middle America, the sort of people who waver, um, who may vote Trump, but are put off by some of his um, statements. They need to reach out to that. And the way to do that is not to pander too much. That is part of the Democratic base these days, but they need to reach out to middle America uh, by focusing on bread and butter issues. And I, I hope they push further on things like universal health care and tougher gun control legislation. That's what I think the Democrats are good at, and I want to see them doing more of that, and less of the identity politics. Um, I hope Harris wins. She will make history as the first woman president, but she shouldn't turn this into a battle of the sexes, because that will just polarise men who might want to vote for her. Um, I think she's a capable person. I think she's smarter than some people think, and time will tell what happens. But no doubt there'll be a lot more to say about this.